tracks, tracking in complex sensor systems. The title of this presentation is Gaussian Processes for Flow Modeling and Prediction of Positioned Trajectories Evaluated with Sports Data, and it was presented at the Fusion Conference 2016 in Heidelberg, Germany. Hello, my name is Yu Xin Zhao. I'm an early stage researcher working on the TREX project at Ericsson in Lichterping, Sweden. Before the presentation, I would like to introduce the general background first followed with problem formulation, then detailed description of the sports data used in our work will be given. Next, flow modeling for both individual and a cluster of individuals are provided. Finally, the conclusion and some of our future work will be given. The topic of the presentation is flow modeling and prediction of position trajectories. So, what is a trajectory? A trajectory is a spatial temporal sequence of data. It can consist of positions, kinematic properties such as velocity, acceleration, receive signal strength values, PMI values, interference levels, physiologic metrics such as heart rate, oximeters, calorie consumptions, and so on. Flow modeling and prediction attract much of the attention today. This may include various research topics, for instance, the study of human motion patterns, and also the traffic flow modeling and predictions, and so on. The flow modeling and prediction of trajectories can be done both online with real-time data or offline with cached stored data. Such kind of data analytics, the flow modeling and prediction in sports is very crucial for both the coach and the public audience. The problem of flow modeling and prediction can be formulated into three main tasks in our work. The first task is to perform clustering of a big amount of trajectories of different classes. The second task is that we can perform parametric or non-parametric trajectory modeling in space or in both time and space. The third task is to perform the prediction of future observations of a new trajectory given the past data. In our example, we apply the flow modeling and prediction on sports data from the fallen 2015 World Ski Championship. So correspondingly, the three tasks become as follows. The first task is to cluster of trajectories of skiers. The second task is to perform non-parametric motion modeling of skiers in the whole race in an uphill segment and in a downhill segment. The third task is to predict the skier's speed in the future time, given the past data. We pick one of the many ski races from the fallen 2015 World Ski Championship. That is the men's 4 by 10 km relay race. In each team, there are four skiers and each of the skiers will compete on one of the two tracks, which is denoted by the red and blue curves in the figure. Each of the track is of 2.5 km long, so that each skier will compete on one of the tracks for four laps. There are some key features in the dataset, which include the latitude, longitude, the time, position on the track, ground speed of the skier, and the distance on track. In our work, we first consider the flow modeling and prediction for individual of skiers. 
Here we consider a simple spatial Gaussian process with scalar output, the ground speed, Vt. Since the individual follow a predefined track, the position of the individual at time t can be uniquely determined by the distance traveled on the track since the start of the race. This distance on track is denoted by d. So the main task is to find a model between the relationship of the velocity vt and the distance on track d. So here the function f is underlying flow model and n is additive noise which is assumed to be Gaussian distributed with zero mean and variance sigma n square. In order to model the relationship between the distance on track and the ground speed of the skier, we propose to use Gaussian process, where the flow model can be approximated by a Gaussian process, which is given by fd is equal to a Gaussian process of mean function md and the covariance function k d d prime. Here, the function k d d prime is called the kernel function, which gave the correlation between two different values d d prime. So given a training data set, which consists of ground speed and distance on track pairs, we can train a Gaussian process model, which is characterized by its mean function and covariance function. After we have obtained this Gaussian process model, we can predict the speed of the skiers given a new distance on track. In our case, both standard Gaussian process and grid-based online Gaussian process are used. In standard Gaussian process, we take the training data as a batch file, and we train a Gaussian model use all the training data set. In grid-based online Gaussian process, we take the training data sequentially, and then we update the posterior mean and variance of some predefined grid points. After that, we only use the predefined grid points to make predictions so that the computation complexity can be greatly reduced if we properly select a small number of grid points. So in order to train a Gaussian process model, here we select the local periodical kernel for individual speed modeling and prediction. Since this kernel incorporates both the periodical behavior and also some minor variations across different labs. On the two figures on this slide, we show the results using both online, using both standard Gaussian process and the grid-based online Gaussian process. On the left, we have the results with standard Gaussian process. Here, we use the first three lab as the training data, and we make predictions for the ground speed of the skier in the last lab. And the blue curve shows the prediction and the black dot shows the true sp ground speed of the skier we have obtained in the data. By comparing the blue curve and the black dot, we can see that standard Gaussian process provide very good prediction performance. On the other hand, we use grid-based online Gaussian process. Similarly, we make very good predictions on the last lap using grid-based online Gaussian process. However, although standard Gaussian process and the grid-based online Gaussian process shows similar performance in terms of mean square arrows as shown on, this on the upper figure, the grid-based online Gaussian process 
can save a lot of computation time, as shown on the lower figure. In such way, the grid-based online Gaussian process is more suitable for real-time data analytics than the standard Gaussian process. Next, the flow model for cluster of individuals will be provided. So before we perform clustering, we need to segment data according to the interested areas. For instance, we select two areas, which is denoted as a killer hill, which is the red one, and the steepest downhill, which is the green one. After segments has been done, the data from other skiers will be put together and then clustering is performed for the killer hill and steepest downhills respectively. So here in our example, we have two clusters for both killer hill and steepest downhill. And then Gaussian process is applied to each of the cluster to find the correct flow model. So here on this slide, we show the results for the killer hill. The upper figure shows the results in the first lap, and the lower figure shows the results for the last lap. Here, the red and blue curve shows the flow model of two clusters respectively. And we can see that in the first lap, there is no significant difference in the behaviors of uh, different skiers. However, in the last lap, we can see that the difference between two clusters become more distinct for this killer hill area. Then, we show the results for the cluster of individuals on the steepest downhill. Unlike in the killer hill, there is no significant difference between different skiers when they compete on the steepest downhill because most of the time we can only see one cluster rather than two. So we conclude that the performance in the killer hill is a more crucial factor than the steepest downhill in determining the final results. So now let's compare the results between the first and the last lap. For the killer hill, all the individuals almost maintain similar average speed in the first and the last lap. However, in the steepest downhill, the average speed of all individuals are lower in last lap than in the first lap. We are thinking that this may be due to the change of the conditions of the tracks, since in the last lap there will be more friction on the track than in the first lap. This may lead to the significant drop in the average speed of all the skiers. After showing all the results, now let's come to the conclusion and the future work. So in this work, both the standard Gaussian process and the grid-based online Gaussian process with the local periodical kernel are proved to be powerful in modeling and predicting the performance of individuals. However, the grid-based online Gaussian process reduces the computation complexity while maintains similar performance, such that it is more appropriate for real-time analytics where the data comes in sequentially. In addition, the aggregated flow models for cluster of individuals reveal that the individuals may behave differently in the killer hill. Well, they seem to follow a similar pattern in the steepest downhill. In the near future, we are considering a grid box modeling, which uh, is a combination of the explicit physical model 
which consider the relationship between acceleration, mass slope, and so on. And the Gaussian process, which is used to model the uncertain friction. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention. For more information about Trax, please visit our site at tracks.u20.nl.